Okay, now I'm very excited to be talking to Winifred Norlander from the uh, uh, Nuon Solar team. Um, they uh, are going to describe, she's going to give you some indication of uh, all the wonderful things they've achieved. But I'm going to um, move the conversation towards um, how these um, seemingly frivolous things are generating wonderful technologies that are going to be enjoyed by everyone. And, um, uh, first of all, we need to really understand what machine we have here. Uh, could you go through it, Winifred, please? Yes. Um, so, hi, uh, I'm Winifred, and this is my solar car. So, she's called Luna, and it's actually the seventh solar car that we've built so far. Um, as you can see, it has a solar panel of about 6.3 um, meters, uh, and it's a silicon uh, solar panel. So, it's basically the same solar cells as that you will find on your roof. The car has a top speed of 160 kilometers an hour, which makes sure that it can drive during uh, normal traffic and even be able to drive in a traffic jam or um, to be in the middle of a city and handle traffic lights. Um, the car is built of carbon fiber, which means that it's really light, so it's only 150 kilograms, which means that we can basically lift it with four people. Um, and move it off the road if it needs to be moved. Um, this is where the driver sits. This is what we call the canopy and as you will see um, it's um, really thin like the rest of the car and it's made of carbon fiber. So this is the steering wheel um, as you can see and uh, it has the braking and the gas panels on the steering wheel and not on the floor. So it's all electrical and the only mechanical part uh, is the brake which is on the right hand side, which is our, uh, our emergency brake actually. It gets really really hot in here during the race, about 55 degrees Celsius and that's why our uh, driver needs to take uh, a lot of water with him. Uh, so three liters for three hours and then all the sweat of course because the driver will be sweating a lot is actually drained down the car because there's a small hole in the bottom of it. Good. Now, uh, is it really true that you seek very thin people to uh, drive the car? Um, well, a lot of people think that, um, but no, because to eliminate the human element, uh, we're um, actually giving every driver uh, sand with him or water to top off the driver to 80 kilograms. So in that way, it really is a technical race and not a human race. Ah, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay, let's talk technology. Uh, <laughs> well, there the we go. windows at the moment, what are they made of? Um, acrylic, perspex, is it? Yes. Um, uh, there's so some interest in something else. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I'm not entirely sure if I can tell this. No. Yet. Okay. Um, well, the point is that uh, there's materials advances are possible, not just in the. Uh, 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 the solar panels themselves will evolve and all that. Um, can we talk about, uh, you did some work with concentrators, you had an interesting um, aspect there. Yeah, so as I told you before, uh, our solar car only has 6.0 square meters of solar array. Well, this car doesn't actually have 6.0 square meters, it only has 5.79 square meters, which means that we still have a tiny piece of area left use. Um, so we actually built these concentrators uh, with the last parts of the solar array and then during the race when we had a static charging stop we take them out of the trunk because this new car actually does have a trunk uh, and we take them out to do the static charging. Uh, so in that way uh, we'd have the tiny pieces of solar cell and then the concentrator which is actually just bent glass We'll focus on that and we could still make use of it. And you've got the wheels, the suspension, you've made advances in that and there's further to go, is there? Yes, yeah, so as you can see, you can't actually see the wheels because they're covered by, uh, well, wheel covers and that's because of aerodynamics. Um, the suspension is in there and it's of aluminium and at the moment we're looking if we can do some more 
um, optimization about that as well. And did you know that the aerodynamics of this car is actually only uh, the same as a side mirror of your normal car? It's just incredible. The, si <laughs> the whole car has the drag of a side mirror. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so that's why it's so yeah. fast, I guess. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And uh, in the Netherlands, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, you're famous for much more than um, tulips, windmills and people two metres tall. Uh, you obviously are doing amazing things. You know, there's another team, I gather, in the Netherlands who have a car that actually donates to the grid. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it's um, a solar car for multiple uh, people. So this is really a Formula One racing car. And we're trying to push technology so that we used in the... Uh, consumer business, while the other car is more focusing on getting the car itself in the consumer business. Therefore, it is workable and, for instance, it's donating energy to the grid. It's wonderful. And at, at the Netherlands is, is a good place to be, isn't it? I'm amazed when I go to the Netherlands in Amsterdam last week. Uh, there are a lot of electric vehicles now, aren't there? There's yes. an attitude, a good attitude. And the politicians are talking of um, Banning internal combustion engines, are they? Yes, a lot of the big cities already have banned some uh, older vehicles uh, and they're now stimulating the use of electric vehicles, um, which is going really well actually. And there's also been some more really great changing uh, changes in um, the Netherlands when we're talking about sustainable ele energy. Uh, for instance, a while ago the first solar road was opened. So this is a cycle track which is completely covered in solar cells. Yes, 70 yes. meters long and it's already providing three houses per year of power. So that yes, will we be have a, a great talk on that. And of course that could be dynamically charging vehicles as they go along, yeah. uh, which would be wonderful. So I suppose um, it, it's, um, it's not your solar racing world, but presumably there's scope for other things. Uh, we heard yesterday um, Professor Pietro Perlo, who used to run Fiat Research, and he's developed a an electric pasta vehicle, which was ha everyone was having a laugh. Uh, but the point is, when it stops, it's not just got big solar cells that come out uh, as a sort of moving restaurant. It, it has a telescopic uh, turbine uh, on, a, on, a, on a telescopic pole, so he gets wind power as well. And some people have done that with road vehicles, although in a city there's no wind, I suppose, usually. But is there any other types of harvesting that you might not be allowed in the race, but do you encounter any of that world? Um, yeah, so as you say, we can't really use any uh, other um, energy than the energy that we get from the sun. So even though this vehicle would actually be really suitable for uh, letting the wind push it, um, we're not really allowed due to regulations. But as you can see, uh, the vehicle is built up like three wing shapes, sort of. Uh, that's also why it's so aerodynamic, so the wind kind of still pushes it along. Um, also makes it difficult for the driver on the other hand, but I guess that's one of the great challenges of being the driver. Oh, that's wonderful, it's great. I mean, but it's certainly in the tradition of the solar impulse plane going around the world and the Turinor boat going around the world all on sunshine, I can imagine. And uh, so in, in times to come, it's difficult to dream, and I can't ask you your secrets anyway. But Presumably there will be better solar cells coming along and uh, I know there's some research on um, transparent solar cells and the rules might not let you but you could have solar cells all over that window and still see out of it. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, and over, it, under the car, over the lights and everything like that. And I, I don't know if it harvested, it. some of them harvest infrared and ultraviolet I think. Uh, you might be allowed that by the rules if there was something that came along. I mean, the research labs they do. do you? Yeah, that would definitely be interesting yeah, to look at. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. So, uh, good luck. I think what you're doing is absolutely marvellous. And uh, we have the solar roads being presented at the end of our conference here. So, that's we're very close to that world. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our event in California. You're going to be a star turn in <laughs> Silicon Valley. We'll wow them. Well, the Europeans you. are doing very exciting things. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, if you'd like to know more, uh, just go to our website uh, www.neuralsolarteam.com 
or follow us on Twitter at newellsolartermo.com and we'll keep you posted about the latest news on our solar vehicle. Wonderful. You're very good. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Well done. 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 Well